Okay, so now as we have seen the uh, pipeline for creating these uh, pre-training data sets. So now let's look at what are the data sets that have come out through such pipelines, right? So we had already looked at this uh, graph earlier and where as time goes by, more and more data sets are coming out. They all, as I said, start from common crawl or some such web crawl and then sort of refine it and grow larger and larger over a period of time, right? And uh, so some of these are publicly available and some of them which were earlier available like book corpus are no longer available and some data sets are also private, right? Uh, yeah, so now uh, if you look at these, we could roughly say that some of these are monolingual uh, data sets, right? And some of these are multilingual data sets. And we are taking this slight liberty of putting uh, code data sets like stack as monolingual, counting them as monolingual English because code is, I mean, I don't know, largely you could think of it as English, right? So now we'll look at uh, some of these data sets. We are not going to look at all of these, but some of the popular ones. And that should sort of cover if, if you have plans to pre-train a model, you should be able to find the required data set from among here or at least look at their pipelines and create your own data set if you want, right? So one way to compare them is to look at the raw size, right? The uncompressed memory size, but that doesn't make so much sense. The other way would be to look at the number of tokens, which is the more standard way of comparing to data, uh, data sets because it also fits in with the scaling laws, right? That uh, you are aiming for a certain model size and you have a data size of certain number of uh, tokens, right? And then these data sets also uh, differ in say for the sake of a, for the want of a better word, say philosophy. So some of them focus on more diversity, but there are some works like Refine Web, which is again a bit old now. It's uh, probably six to nine months old now, nine months at least, uh, which said that hey, you can get good performance just by using a lot of clean and large amount of web data. So if you remember, they had done a lot of cleaning starting from the 100% come down to 24%. And their 24% was actually 5 trillion tokens and they had shown at least at that time that training on that data gives good performance on multiple benchmarks. But then over a period of time some of these claims don't hold true because then once people start using uh, them for other purposes then some uh, drawbacks start coming up. I'm not talking about Falcon in particular but in general for all models, right? So there's a certain uh, splash when the models are released but then as they get used some of those uh, initial observations do not hold or new uh, insights emerge and so on, right? Yeah. So let's look at these data sets uh, in terms of certain uh, characteristics. So C4 has only English data. It has 156 billion tokens. Uh, it's not uh, curated in the sense that uh, it's not like a careful curation of uh, web pages or anything. They just took the common crawl and then uh, took uh, took a applied cleaning and filtering and all of that on that, right? And in terms of diversity, it only contains web pages, right? Uh, Pile is more curated because it's a collection of different uh, sources and we will see that it has 170 billion tokens and 22 different sources, right? So these sources were curated. Stack is only code, right? So it contains 380 programming languages and over 1 trillion tokens, quite a bit. Uh, again, curated because it's taken from certain programming websites. Uh, Refine Web again starts from common crawls, so it's not curated. It has 5 trillion tokens, uh, of which only 600 billion are released publicly. It's only English and contains web pages only. Uh, Red Pajama has uh, multilingual content, English and multilingual. Uh, the English part is 1.2 trillion tokens and the entire multilingual part is 30 trillion tokens. But as I had said earlier, a lot of this contains uh, very uh, a lot of duplicate data. Uh, and so there's a slim pajama version of this which has cleaned up or removed some of the duplicates, right? And it is again quite diverse. It has web pages, uh, books, content from archive, Wikipedia, Stack Exchange, which are these conversation threads on problems that people post or questions that people post and so on, right? Uh, then Dolma is again English only, 3 trillion tokens, again a good diversity in the sources that they have uh, considered. MC4 is a multilingual uh, uh, version of C4. Uh, again, it contains only web pages. Roots is again multilingual version. It has uh, natural language and programming languages. And Sangraha, which uh, I was talking about, which is something that we have built for uh, Indian languages. Uh, it is curated in the sense that we have curated all the websites and other content that we want to take in. And it is again a bit diverse because it has web videos, digitized PDF, and also some synthetic content. We have taken 
uh, content from some of the data sets listed above which are for English and then translated it to Indian languages using uh, our open source machine translation system, right. Uh, so these are uh, like some comparison across the diversity and the number of tokens in these languages and as you can see Dolma and uh, which is publicly available is the largest publicly available data set right now. Falcon is, uh, so the refined web is bigger than that but it is not all publicly available. Now, there are data sets which are aggregation of uh, other data sets. So, the pile is actually a com com uh, sort of a compilation or aggregation of many data sets. So, you can see this is the common crawl part of it. Then there is, they have taken articles from PubMed, books which I think are no longer available, then open web text which is a previous effort, archive, GitHub which is code, then some law content, stack exchange, all of this. Right? So, multiple different sources they have aggregated and collected the pile which is 170 billion tokens. It was popular at one point of time but now many bigger data sets have come up. And then there was red pajama uh, which has common crawl plus C4 which again should tell you that it would have duplicates because C4 is again built from common crawl. Then GitHub, books, archive, lot of uh, diversity here. So the total amount was 1.2 trillion, 1 trillion tokens but then when they did a, a clear deduplication it got reduced to 670 billion tokens and that version was released as Slim Pajama. Then we have Dolma which is the most recent data set that has come out uh, which has 3 trillion tokens. This is from Allen AI. Again a good diversity in the sources, a good uh, cleaning pipeline in terms of all the known uh, ways of cleaning data when you are taking it from multiple sources. All of that they have applied and you have uh, 3 trillion tokens. Of course, a lot of it dominated by common crawl so almost 2 trillion tokens taken from there. Right. And but it has uh, code, it also has social media kind of content, it also has papers, stem papers, books and encyclopedia uh, content. Right. And of course observe the increase in the token count over the years. Uh, so data diversity is important, right? So you have all these multiple sources. So now if you look at these aggregate data sets or composite data sets, right? So now they have multiple sources. Now all of those sources may have different amount of data. As you can see here, uh, the amount of uh, Wikipedia content is very small as compared to the common crawl content or even compared to the stack content, right? So you want to mix these together. So this is all the sources that you are combining. And now what you'll do is do some sort of sampling from these different sources and feed the data to the model. And here's sort of an illustration of what you would do, right? So suppose we decide to train the model on 15 million training steps. You're going to do 15 million training steps. And in each training step, you're going to show 2 raised to 16 tokens, right? So that's your batch size, right? So this will totally result in 1 trillion uh, tokens. So if that's the case, uh, now for every batch, what you will do is you'll sample from all these available sources. So all the 2, two raised to 16 tokens that you're showing per batch, you will sample in some predefined distribution. So if you want that, hey, although Wikipedia content is very small, I want to show it as often as I show web text, then you just have to duplicate the Wikipedia content and sort of sample it more frequently, right? But then of course, duplication has a problem. So you might choose to go with the natural distribution and just sort of uh, sample in that, or you might up sample also, both, both are done with uh, differing opinion on what is better and what is not, right? But that is how you'd construct this batch of 2 raised to 16 tokens, taking content from multiple sources. And, but this is when you want diversity, right? So there is a very uh, prominent school of thought which says that data diversity is important. One sort of evidence, which is, uh, again, I would not rely too much on it because as I said, uh, six, nine months this model was proposed, but after that lot has changed. But their uh, contention was that, hey, only web data is enough. You don't need to have other diverse sources. But I think today it's roughly uh, or widely accepted that more diverse sources are always better. And you should just have clean data, but diverse sources. Right? Uh, yeah, so if you look at GPT-3, again, it was trained on diverse sources then and different proportion of data set. A lot of it, 60% was uh, common crawl, but they also had like sort of... Uh, high knowledge content like books and Wikipedia and all that. Similarly, Llama had core content also, right? So it had GitHub, although 4.5% only of the total data. So they, these are the sampling proportions that they had used. And then they had archive, stack exchange, which gives you conversations. Uh, even for Palm, they had a lot of emphasis on social media conversations, right? So they had taken a lot of data from social media conversations. Of course, none of this data is publicly available, 
but their sampling proportions were quite uh, different than uh, the other models out there, right? So, a uh, lot of it is also a function of what data you have access to, right? If you would have access to social media conversations and given that you typically sort of uh, use uh, uh, these models in a chat scenario, right? The chat GPT kind of use case, you might want to train them on conversations, but if you don't have access to them, what do you do? So, then you sort of train on whatever other diverse sources that you have, right? Um, now, looking at different uh, models, right? Uh, and what was what went into those models. So, uh, if you look at it, most of the models that uh, were listed there, right, uh, they have a large amount of uh, web content. The models which have do not have a large amount of uh, uh, web content are these alpha code like models which are trained for coding only, right. So, these models are for code generation. So, the, of course, it makes sense to train them completely on code data. Uh, then there are some models which cater to academic content, so they were trained largely on academic content. Apart from web, the other interesting source is uh, Wikipedia because it's a high information dense content and similarly books because it's very good natural language content which you see in books and typically more reliable than the content that you see on the uh, web, right. So, this is what the uh, distribution looks like and as I said, Lambda and Palm uh, which were uh, Google's internal models. Uh, they had more uh, conversation uh, data in them, right? And and some of these data sets were also trained on multilingual data. So, let us see that. So, if you look at these different things, so how many of them were trained on pile? So, there were a few which were trained on pile. How many of them use C4? So, there are quite a few which use C4 or at least part of C4. And then there were some of them which were multilingual, right? So, ML stands for multilingual. So, uh, Bloom had 71% content which was multilingual, Palm had 22% content which was multilingual, Lama had very little multilingual content and most other models were purely English models, right. And in terms of filters, uh, they had toxicity filters, either heuristic based which is H or classifier based which is C. So, as you can see, a lot of papers use heuristic based uh, uh, quality filters. The classifier based filters are typically that, hey, uh, I have trained a classifier on a lot of good content uh, and now does this web page look like the good content that I have seen before? If not, I am going to throw it away, right? And whether this is publicly available, so many of these data sets are not publicly available. Some of them are only partially publicly available and uh, this is also the year, right? So, now a bit uh, more stuff has happened since then, but still a very useful uh, compilation of all the interesting things that have happened and how people think about data diversity, uh, filters for cleaning, which are the popular data sources and what is publicly available and not, right? And I hope this keeps getting updated. So, we have given you the link of the original uh, source and you can follow it, right? So, that is all I had about all the data sets and the pipelines and the filters that are used for creating this pre-training data for uh, large language models and as I had said, all the models that we see, they typically differ in what kinds of data sources they are using and it is a con continuously evolving field uh, where more and more data is getting crawled as well newer data, so data sources are also getting added, right. Uh, so, I will end here and I uh, will see you in the next lecture where I will where we'll continue on our journey of the road ahead which is to understand the ways in which these large language models differ from each other. So, we have seen the data slice of it. Now, we will see the other slices which is the positional embeddings, the attention mechanisms and so on, right. So, I will see you again next week. Thank you.